kids, today is National Day. Happy Birthday, Singapore! As you have fun celebrating as a family this weekend, don't forget to be grateful and to give thanks to God for our little red dot. Jesus loves listening to children's prayers, so join us as we pray for our nation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God our Father, thank you for blessing and protecting Singapore. Continue to bless Singapore with good leaders and guide us to show love and care for one another. We pray for our church here that the Holy Spirit will bless the work of our hands. Mother Mary, we place Singapore in your protective care. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Children, thank you for all the amazing artwork that you have shared with us on Padlet. They were bright, colourful, and inspiring. Now, some of you shared with us how Jesus loved and cared for you. It's so encouraging to see you making little faith steps weekly to know and love Jesus more and more. Well done, kids! As we sing this song, let us pray that Jesus will continue to light our world. The world is searching for an answer, a ray of hope in a hopeless world. Who can we turn to? Where is our rescue? There is someone, he's the answer, he's the light and the light the Children, have you ever seen anyone walk on water? I wonder what it feels like. Let's find out. One day after the crowds had left, Jesus was up in the mountain by himself praying. His disciples were on a boat out on the lake. They had to battle the waves as the wind was against them. Then, 
Early in the morning, Jesus walked towards them on the lake. They were terrified as they thought they saw a ghost. Jesus then called out to them saying, Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Jesus called out to Peter. Come, said Jesus, and Peter stepped out of the boat and walked across the water to Jesus. But as soon as he noticed the strong wind, he was frightened and began to sink. He cried out to Jesus, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him, saying, Men of little faith, why do you doubt me? As they got into the boat, the wind dropped. That day, the disciples experienced the power of God. Isn't it amazing that Jesus can walk on water? Well, Jesus is God the Son, so there is nothing that he can do. But to see Peter walking on water, that is mind-blowing. John, do you want to walk on water? Can I? How? We just need to be courageous like Peter. For example, when you find yourself in a challenging situation, like trying to solve a difficult math problem, or when you are feeling afraid, because of something that has happened, you just need to keep your eyes on Jesus. Have faith and trust in Him. Then, we too can walk on water. This song reminds us that nothing is impossible with Jesus if we put our faith in Him. Through you, I can do anything. You gives me strength. Nothing is impossible to you. Thine eyes are open. Strong words are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. I'm not gonna live. Nothing is impossible with God. 
But it's not easy to always keep our eyes on Jesus, just like the disciples. Sometimes we can't seem to see Jesus in the difficult situations. Our vision becomes blurry when it's difficult to solve that math problem or to face a bully. We forget to ask Jesus to help us. After we ask Jesus to help us, sometimes we meet other difficulties along the way and we get frustrated or are distracted by other things like watching television programs. We take our eyes off Jesus and just like Peter, we begin to sink. During those times, we need to remember to call out to Jesus like Peter did. Jesus will always be there to pull us back up if we call on his name. Let us now listen to a story of a saint who put all his faith and trust in Jesus. Maximilian Kolbe was born in Poland. He had a vision of the Virgin Mary when he was 12 years old, and from then on, he devoted his life to Mother Mary. He was ordained a Franciscan friar at 24. He was very passionate about spreading the good news of Jesus for the conversion of sinners and the enemies of the church. He started a magazine and a publication which grew to 1 million in membership and subscription. He consecrated his work to Mother Mary. During World War II, his publication was shut down and Maximilian Kolbe was arrested. He suffered beatings and humiliations in prison. When 10 men were selected to be put to death to pay for the escape of one prisoner, he volunteered in place of a man with a family. He sacrificed his life for another. While waiting for his death, he led the other prisoners in singing and praying. He put his faith and trust in God till the end of his life. Did you know that St. Maximilian Kobe has been to Singapore? He is a modern saint who showed us the way to live as a faithful disciple of Christ. He had many challenges, but he always kept his eye on Jesus and brought the good news of Jesus to all. So children, always remember to call on Jesus. Have faith in Him and put your trust in Him. Children, remember to keep your eyes on Jesus so that you can walk on water. One way you can do this is to spend time with Jesus and adore Him in the Blessed Sacrament. He will speak to you in your heart. You can find the link to the Perpetual Eucharistic Adoration and activities for this week in the Padlet link below. Oh, and as children, let us not forget to pray for our country. Join Corinne May in this song of prayer, Bless Our Singapore.
To set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Catholic Mars at Home. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us about something that we will see at Mass later. At Mass, Father prays the words of Jesus over the bread and wine so that they become Jesus' body and blood. Have you ever noticed the special way Father gets the chalice ready? During the offertory, he pours wine into the chalice, and then he adds just a few drops of water. The wine, which is rich, sweet, and fragrant, represents the amazing power of Jesus' divine nature. The water which has no colour, smell or taste, represents Jesus' human nature, which is so small and weak when compared with God. Once they are mixed, can the wine be separated from the water? No, they are together forever. In the same way, Jesus is both God and human forever. And because he took on our human nature, we are there in the chalice with him. As Father prays, by the mystery of the water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Thank you, Auntie Estella, for sharing with us about the water and wine. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent, and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with Children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and to learn more about how we should always keep our eyes on Jesus and trust in Him. There is nothing like giving God our hands and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on this ninth and Sunday in ordinary time. 9th August 2020. We offer this Mass for our nation Singapore that her people may stay united and strive for the common good, and for all children in the world that they may always keep their eyes on the Lord. Join us in singing the processional hymn, Praise to the Lord.
So good morning, children, and good morning to all of us who have joined in this uh, Eucharistic celebration on this 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So, you know, as we always say, the Ordinary Time is not meant to be... Uh, Ordinary in the sense that it is boring and there's nothing happening. The ordinary is just as important as those big moments that we celebrate in life. And today in our uh, homily and in the gospel, we reflect on the ordinariness of life. And part of the ordinary means that we don't always get things right. Life is not always a celebration. You know, we are also sometimes sad and disappointed, perhaps with ourselves and others. Because we are sinful and we have sinned against God. But the good news is that God forgives us and has shown us this forgiveness in Jesus. And so as we prepare ourselves to celebrate this mystery, we ask for God's forgiveness as we begin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring we pray to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. A reading from the first book of the Kings. When Elijah reached Horeb, the mountain of God, he went into the cave and spent the night in it. Then he was told, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Then the Lord himself went by. There came a mighty wind, so strong that it tore the mountains and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind came an earthquake. The Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire there came the sound of a gentle breeze. And when Elijah heard this, he covered his face with his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us see. A reading from the letter St. Paul to the Romans. What I want to say is no pretense. I say it in union with Christ. It is the truth. My conscience in union with the Holy Spirit assures me of it too. What I want to say is this. My sorrow is so great, my mental anguish so endless, I will willingly be condemned and be cut off from Christ if it could help my brothers of Israel. My own flesh and blood, they were adopted as sons. 
they were given the glory and the covenant. The law and the ritual were drawn up for them, and the promises were made to them. They are descended from the patriarchs, and from their flesh and blood came Christ, who is above all. God forever blessed. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead on the other side while he would send the crowds away. After sending the crowds away, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, while the boat, by now far out on the lake, was battling with a heavy sea, for there was a headwind. In the fourth night, watch of the night, he went towards them, walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But at once Jesus called, out to them, saying, Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. It was Peter who answered. Lord, he said, if, if it is you, tell me to come to you across the water. Come, said Jesus. Then Peter got out of the boat and started walking towards Jesus across the water. But as soon as he felt the force of the wind, he took fright and began to sink. Lord, save me, he cried. Jesus put out his hand at once and held him. Man of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And as they got into the boat, the wind dropped. The men in the boat bowed down before him and said, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do you like big presents? Yes. Yeah. We all like to receive big presents. I remember, especially during Christmas, when I see a big present under the tree, I get really excited. But are all big presents nice? Have you be received a big present that you didn't really like? Like, eh, you know, it wasn't like that fantastic after all. You got all excited for, for nothing, so to speak. Have you received big presents that you didn't really like? Yes? No? Yes. Yes? I know I there, there, there are big presents. I know some of you, all your big presents you like. <laughs> there have been big presents that I have received that I didn't really like. And, you know, I preferred something else. But you know, something, sometimes when we get something else, it's also expensive. So it's either big or it's expensive, right? And then like, okay. But does it mean that we can only appreciate things that are big and expensive? I, I remember when I was in, in the Philippines, I'd gone home for a while. I was studying there in the Philippines. And someone had donated some nice chocolates, some really expensive chocolates. And because, you know, I was about to go back, I decided, okay, you know, instead of eating them for myself, I wanted to share them with my friends in Philippines because 
You know, I wanted to share the nice things that I get in Singapore and help them to experience it and see, you know, maybe they can enjoy it too. I wanted to share the good things that I had. So I went back and I brought it to to them and, you know, they ate and they're like, mm, it's not that great. Actually, you should try this other chocolate. And this other chocolate came from the roadside shop near their place. It wasn't expensive at all, you know, it was really cheap. But somehow, they didn't like the expensive chocolate. They preferred the cheap chocolate. They were used to that. And I tried it and, well, it was not bad. But why am I sharing this? It is because sometimes when we are not alert, we tend to assume that only the only times that or the things that are important are only the grand moments in life, the big moments. We only pay attention when something big is going to happen. We may set our expectations high when going out to expensive meals with our families, right? When we have a big, nice meal, when we go out, we get excited. But we forget sometimes perhaps the simple pizza parties that we have at home and we sit down and we all have fun and watch TV together or whatever it may be. So both are good, the big and the small, the grand and the simple, but not all big things that happen are significant. And this happens in both our readings today. So we have two very, very interesting stories. So the first one is, of course, in the first reading of Elijah. So we hear in, in, in the reading that mighty winds came. So Elijah was in a cave and uh, God asked him to go there and there was a mighty wind. But this mighty wind could break rocks. So, you know, it was not just any wind. It was like a tornado or a hurricane, you know, that kind of strong wind that came. So he had a, he had a tornado and then I don't know how, how long after, but it doesn't, according to the story, it doesn't seem very long after. Then he, re, he experiences a big earthquake and then a fire. Like, you know, what is the likelihood of all these things happening in sequence, right? But somehow, God asked him to be there. Fair enough. And these things happen. But it was not those things that sort of helped him to connect with God. After all those things happen, like, you know, there's a big empty noise, right? And then like, okay, yeah, whatever. And then he has this gentle breeze on his face and it touches him at the very heart of his being. And he knew that God was there with him. God wasn't in all those big things. He was in the wind. Now we have something similar, a similar story, so to speak, you know, uh, with Jesus. So Jesus, now, by for the longest time, had not done many very big acts, right? He might have healed a few people, you know, he preached. Uh, and, and of course, he was living what he was preaching. But, you know... It's like, some of them were like, ah, are you sure this guy is for real? Uh, and the biggest act he did before, just before today's gospel was he had like, was able to feed so many people uh, with two loaves and five fish and everybody, the multitudes were able to eat. Now that was supposed to be a big deal, but I think the disciples didn't quite believe it yet. And so anyway, he sent them off. You go ahead, I'll come after you. And he went off to pray and it was already early in the morning. Uh, they say fourth watch of the night is like maybe 4 a.m. You know, so it's early in the morning, it's dark, and now the winds are very strong, right? Now, that's the, like, the, the, the best drama situation for a ghost story. And indeed, Jesus says, okay, you know, let's go big, right? Since they don't know me, they don't understand me, they don't see what, who I am yet, okay, I'm just going to walk on water, <laughs> okay? So he, he goes and he walks on water, and of course, they think it's a ghost and they're terrified. And then, of course, then Peter asked to go ahead and, and to, 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 to come to Jesus, right? And in the end, of course, Peter fell into the water and Jesus held him up and they all got to the boat safely. Now, this was a big event. But it was not this big event that mattered. Jesus was not trying to, to impress them. The point of the story in the gospel is Peter's connection with Jesus at that very moment when he saw him. He asked Jesus, ask me to come to you. And at that moment when he, when he fixated his eyes on Jesus, he, 
nothing else mattered. It wasn't he didn't he didn't think about the big wins that were going on. He didn't think about the ghost or whatever was happening. It was just this moment, you know. Everything seemed to be in the background, and it was only Jesus and him, and the intimate connection that they had. And the moment he lost that, he fell into the water, or he was, you know, he, yeah, he could not walk on water anymore. And so it's not sometimes the big events in our lives that help us to feel the greatest connection with people or the deepest the deepest connections we have with people or with God do not come necessarily from the big events. Sometimes while the big things are going on around us, it is the little things that strike us. These simple, intimate moments of connection are what makes our relationships with people around us matter. They may occur around the big things, like all the stories that we have heard today, but the big things in and of themselves are not where we find God or recognize His presence. Also rarely where we actually connect deeply with the people we care about most. So I invite you to think for a moment that something perhaps that happened this week might be something insignificant, but it might have touched your heart and strike you. It might have made you happy inside. Uh, it might, you know, you, you feel good uh, with the little thing that happened today. And I'd like to assure you that that is where God is. It could be a genuine moment, it's just a short moment of laughter with a friend. It could be a moment that you, when you wanted to say something to someone you've been wanting to and you managed to get it off your chest. Maybe you helped someone unexpectedly and that made you feel good. You know, it wasn't planned, it wasn't, nobody saw it, you know, it was just a little thing that happened, but it stuck with you and it remained with you. Just think about what it is and acknowledge where God was with you in that moment. So we've heard God speak to us in our own ways, in our own reflections. And now we renew ourselves in our faith as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, just as Peter was able to call out to Jesus for help with confidence, we now place our needs before God. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Bishop William, all priests and clergy, that with fearless faith and fortitude, they may guide the Church through the turbulent waters of our time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our homeland Singapore, that we commit ourselves anew this National Day weekend to being a nation where all citizens and residents may develop in the fullness of their human dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are fearful, anxious, depressed, or grieving amidst the storm in their life, that they may set their eyes on Jesus, crying out to Him and hearing His assuring voice say, Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families facing crisis, that they may hear Christ's invitation to step forward in faith and find healing and renewal as they take the hand of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers, we pray in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you stretch out your hand to us when we call for help. Deliver us from fear and call us to faith. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church. For in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mort mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So for those of us at home who are unable to receive Christ in tangibly or physically in the sacrament, we ask the Lord by our desire to come upon us, to help us to feel Him in the quiet of our heart as we close our eyes, as we pause, and as we think of Him, we ask Him to fill our heart with His love, with His presence, and to receive Him spiritually. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that You are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, uh, before we end the Mass, uh, we wish you all a happy National Day. Today is, na today is National Day and we 
uh, thank God for the gift of our country, our independence. And uh, yeah, in a special way, we consecrate uh, this country to, to Mary. We ask her to take care of us uh, as we ensure that we, or we look out for the lost and the least among our society. It is not so much those who are successful that uh, we want to, to really help or we need to help, but it is those who are struggling. They belong to our country and they are part of Singapore. And we ask Our Lady, she has a special care always, as Jesus has, for those who are abandoned, those who are struggling, those uh, who need her. And that's why we have a special devotion to our Mother of Perpetual Help, those who are always in need of, of, of help. And we ask her to help those in our country who are in need so that we could become a better country and a place that welcomes all. So we commend this country to her as we had done as well when we had our prayers of the faithful. So happy National Day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. First time in our history, public masses closed, our gates were locked, and our churches were empty. But in adversity, we responded as one with creativity, zeal and fortitude. Stepping out of our comfort zones and rising up to bring Jesus to all, just like the Christians before us. In this season, we have embraced change to continue the life-giving work of Christ. New evangelization is to make sure the gospel permeates every sector of society. 
to deepen and grow our faith. To bring the good news to all. To encourage each other in prayer. To form our young. To build our communities. And reach out to one another. New ways to encounter Jesus. New ways to bring us together. Not physically. Because the real unity is a spiritual unity. We continue to live the kind of life that people can see that we are transformed. That we are alive. That even in such a situation, we see the Lord Jesus giving us life. And we are continuing to give life to others. To come together as one family. To face the challenges of a new normal. As the doors of our church open once more, there will be more challenges to come. Let us as one body be united with the spirit of fortitude to rise up and give of our time, talents and treasures to build a more vibrant, evangelizing and missionary church.